Can we play next week? Oh, sorry, Henry. Sorry. No, that's early then. She's okay. Coming in. Oh, that's six weeks. Thanks, Kathy. She's. Do you want me to pause it? Yeah, that's fine. Anybody else have any story? All right, I'd like to call the um, village, the committee of the whole of the um, Shored Village Board to order at 6.08 p.m. Um, all trustees are present with the exception of Trustee Kudo, has, who has been excused. We have two items on the agenda this evening, um, both pertaining to our 2025 budget process. Um, and we will take, um, and just a, a word at the outset, um, tonight's meeting is to provide the village board the opportunity to review the budget, to ask questions, obviously to review the um, poll results of the community engagement survey that we had out and open. Um, we do not have public comment listed on the um, agenda this evening. Um, and that is for the purposes of, uh, so that we have enough time for the village board to talk. Um, to give direction, and then um, no decisions are being made this evening, um, but we hope to offer guidance on the high impact um, policy decisions tonight, and um, and there will be a public hearing, and in the meantime, anyone who has comments um, should definitely be submitting those um, throughout uh, the coming weeks. So I just wanted to clarify that. So item one, review of the high impact option poll results. And this is brought to us by assistant manager Anderson. Good evening, thank you. Um, again, I know we have a little bit of time uh, set aside for this uh, to discuss this this evening. I uh, just wanted to recap you all based on what we saw a while ago with the communications uh, plan for the uh, 2025 budget process. One of the goals was of course early on to try to drive as much traffic as possible to that dedicated web page. So you'll note that any time that we had the opportunity to talk about it in the manager's memo through social media, we were really wanting to make sure that folks knew to start there. So. Uh, an informed public is an active public, and so we wanted to make sure that they had the information, be it uh, the overall PSA or the uh, chapters that we split up for each of the high impact options, uh, and then also had uh, those one pager documents available so that they could review what they were uh, really trying to uh, add their voice to. Um, without taking too, too much time, again, we had 204 respondents to the poll. Um, we did advertise it multiple times in the village manager's memo, as well as on our social media pages. So um, outside of that, I have some of the charts that were included in the packet. Um, if you have questions about um, any of the data or analytics, I didn't do a deep, deep dive, but I have the number of comments for each of the uh, categories, if you would like that. But outside of that, I wanted to make sure that we just pulled the information and had it available for you in the packet. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I wanted to say that, you know, this is a great community engagement tool. Um, but now that I work with data scientists, I realize that we don't have anyone on the staff who is, um, you know, really expected to perform that interpret, you know, that data analysis. Sure. Um, so I would think that if we, I'll just open it up for high level responses from the trustees, if you, if anything struck you, um, or just what you're um, thinking in response to these results. And then if if you we didn't set up kind of a matrix or a weighting system, but if you have an idea that how these results are going to factor into your decision making, you know, and you want to share that with the group, um, that's fine too. We have a, did we set aside 15 minutes or 10? No, oh, just 10 minutes. So let's keep it quick. <laughs> Trustee Yersing. Um, I guess I don't have much to add to this. Uh, I just want to uh, thank the community, uh, the people that responded uh, and went online and did this did this poll. I think, uh, you know, it's uh, incredibly helpful for us uh, to to get that kind of feedback. And um, we, uh, you know, I personally love that engagement. I think we all can agree that we love the engagement from our residents to hear what we're thinking, whether that we agree or disagree. Um, just really value that kind of engagement and the response to this uh, to this poll. Thank you. Anyone else? 
Trustee Stokeman. So in the interest of full disclosure, I am not a data person. And so it was interesting to me as someone who doesn't know a lot about data collection. First choice, 39% delay capital equipment purchase and established policy. And then 24% put it levy increases as their first choice. But then you don't see levy increases taking a big chunk again until sixth choice. And so I don't understand how to understand that. I, If someone has more background, because the first circle graph made me think, oh, okay, so 24% think in that context, a tax levy increase is good, although we didn't say how much. But then you get all the way down to the sixth choice before it gets to a bigger percentage. And I don't know if someone can... Does it matter what, help me understand. You know, it seems to me to be contradictory. I, I get you. And I mean, it was kind of an even distribution. I mean, you've got a bell curve, like standard deviations. Some of these uh, performed, I mean, really your kind of middle of the road options were almost evenly distributed uh, throughout. So um, I thought that this visual tool was a little bit more helpful than what was originally pulled from the Google form because it was originally just going to give you bar charts all the way. So I know that the pie distribution is something that we're a little bit more familiar with. So I like uh, the pies. Oh, same. <laughs> so um, outside I of- I don't understand first and sixth and how levy increases went from such a high second place to the biggest six. I, I don't understand. Just don't the numbers think. that, just the responses that we got. I can't. All right. I don't it. think we have that anal level of analysis. Yeah. Trustee Arndorfer. Yeah, I'd just like to thank all uh, the residents who uh, submitted their you know, responded to the poll and submitted their comments. I mean, I read all the comments multiple times, and just um, you know speaks to the challenge we have ahead of us in terms of finding a way through. So I definitely appreciate the um, resident input as well as, um, you know, all the participation we saw at the forums. So I just want to thank staff for pulling all that together. It was um, helpful for setting context as we head into this. One other question. Do we know 204 respondents? We've been doing polls now. I don't know how long. Is this high, medium, low? Um, compared to bit. like parks i mean we did right um i know oh, chicken the survey, had I guess quite the, a few, the yeah the community survey. survey we were just under 700 so oh, um right. that's good to know all right anyone else mm -hmm. i have a couple thoughts okay i'll jump in um so yeah uh, i also shared the thank you um i think it's really tough because to your point trustee stokebrand in that first pie chart, you know, the overwhelming um, highest ranked option was the deferring capital request and develop, developing a policy. Unfortunately, that makes no fiscal impact on the deficit of the general fund. So it's kind of, that's my struggle with these surveys is that it sets up these kind of false questions because it's apples and oranges sometimes, and that's not a criticism. I have never f known how to do a public survey you know, I, I, again, I think it's great community engagement, but how scientific it is or understanding why the results are the way they are. And you have 200 responses, but the, the written comments are not 200, you know, so you really just right. don't know. Um, that said, you know, it, it is tough when in the written comments, you know, there was a really large theme around, you know, a complaint that taxes are too high, stop coming to us for money. And it's really tough because really what people are saying is the cost of services is too high, but we don't set the cost of services. The services we provide are driven by private market, you know, and so it's not, um, and property taxes is structurally, you know, statutorily really where our revenue comes from, you know, with the exception. And state aids come from income taxes and federal <laughs> grants come from income taxes. So it all goes back to, you know, the same people paying for things. And so it's really tough to hear. And I mean, I understand the impulse and I understand the response. And yet structurally at the end of the day, we can't really um, get into that conversation 
I can relate to the sentiment, but there is no other way to pay for public services. Um, and then, um, and at the end of the day, the costs remain, you know, that we have to set a budget um, for providing services. So I think that would be, um, but I think it'll be great to hold on to these um, and all the engagement that we had around this round for our service level discussion um, coming up. All right, so with that, I would close this item and uh, move on to item two, which is review of the 2025 budget. There are four kind of sub um, categories of discussion. And the way that I would like to move through this, you know, my goal is to really leave this room with clear direction for the board. I, I mean, for the um, staff in terms of next step for developing this document. Um, and so for that reason, I'm going to, you know, make sure that we um, take a temperature check. We're not taking votes, but we can certainly operate through consensus um, so that we're really discussing what it is that um, we need to be discussing and we're not discussing what we already have agreement on. So for with that, um, we already said that uh, we weren't going to do a we're not doing a formal presentation, right? We're kind of gonna walk through the sections and ask for questions. And if there's none, then we would go by, um, go through, a, you know. And so what, um, so we can do that. And then what I'm gonna do is ask um, the village board if we are in agreement with the budget proposed in front of us for, as a forecasting model, as a policy document, obviously the exact, we're not adopting the budget. We're just saying, is this going in the right direction for, for um, since there are policy decisions within it? Okay, so with that, um, Christina's gonna, or how will we say your last name, Dahmer? Dahmer. Um, Thank you for your attention and time again. I won't do a very long formal presentation. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for the departments for being here. I did want to just do a real quick high level and remind ourselves where we're at and the types of things we're going to be walking through. My memo that um, uh, is a summary at the onset kind of takes you through the same items we've been talking at ad nauseum. Um, however, we have presented some additional considerations, again, presenting how the cost of living adjustments have shaped up over not just the past, but the immediate future. Um, the budget that we have prepared not only includes the cost of living adjustments, but also the market level adjustments so that the salaries can be brought up to the cost of living as well as the market value so that we're set up for success over the next three to five year period, which is what we want. Um, so we thought that it would be nice for you to see a couple of different presentations for that purpose. And an overall summary of what that looks like is your 3% COLA increase village wide would be about $250,000 with an additional $205,000 for the market value adjustments for a total update to the salaries of 455,000. Um, 455. What was it? 55? 205? 250 plus 205. And so what about those, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just doing a really quick summary. And then when we get into those details, we can certainly discuss them. Uh, so we wanted to show you that with the CPI of 12% over the five, the past five years, we have, um, you know, looking at just a one-time market adjustment of about 2% to complement the 3% COLA adjustment results in an overall 5% adjustment to the village salaries. And that then includes both the 3% for the COLA, as well as the 2% for the market value adjustment that is needed to true us up and prepare us for the following uh, fiscal years that are coming our way. And then of course, the other topics included in the memo, we've talked about the levy increase of 6%, um, 
the recycling refuse charge, the vehicle registration fee. We'll go through all of these as we go through the budget, the street light system, parking utility, as well as, uh, as the president mentioned, delaying capital purchases, as well as a policy for how we tackle those over the next few years. Uh, when it comes to the Capital Projects Fund, I do want to point out some things before we get there. Um, in the past, in the village's past of budgeting, there has been a clear separation between what is funded through the levy and what is funded through debt service. And I want to make the distinction that any debt service we currently have outstanding, of course, is for past projects. And... Uh, none of the financing situations we're looking at uh, are going to move the needle on that. What we're looking at for the capital projects is a focus on the future financing of those projects and how we're going to move them around. So the debt service is a component of that. But when you look at Fund 400, we're really focused on what are the equipment and repair types of needs that we're going to need in that fund that would be levied and financed by taxes. So I just wanted to point that out before we got there. Um, my memo also shows you that there's the minimum critical amounts that are currently included to finance in the budget, and then what it would cost if you wanted to add on the additional amounts. Um, the other caveat with the Capital Projects Fund is because of the, the levy, there is a certain amount that is levied for the Capital Projects Fund. If we continue to do that on a consistent basis, it will help finance a portion of those debt service funded projects, right? So you're going to actually build up your fund balance in the capital projects fund to help with those future project costs rather than the debt service. Um, so you can levy each year, but if we don't take the levy this year, we're not going to have those resources to spend for capital projects in the future. So that's why we've built the budget that way so that we are levying the full amount that we decide on. And a portion of that is set aside, not just for tomorrow's 2025's capital project purchases, but the ones that are going to occur over the next future years as well. I think that's a distinction that maybe was a little bit more challenging to perceive from the budget presentation as is because it's different than the past. Um, and then, of course, the remaining timeline is we will we still have a planned meeting on the 14th to do a wrap up and review of what we discussed today. And then we'll have public comment on November 18th to adopt the budget. Uh, the remainder then of the summary uh, shows you how the village's budget is formed. The main part is, of course, the general fund. And then we have all of the other components. So this is where we can just start walking through the budget, if you will. Um, so if we look at the first pieces, the general fund is made up of most of the village's departments, including the village board, municipal court, manager's office, clerk, customer service, finance department, and other general administration. And then again, I want to point out that a portion of your public works is also separated out into the general fund and the other parts are in sewer and water. And then of course you have public safety as well. Um, so as a reminder, the biggest shift in the general fund is gonna be that you see a full amount for the outsourcing in 2025 for the finance department. And then uh, this does not include any capital related items as a reminder. So the general fund is mostly operational. However, all of those uh, big ticket items that we are presenting as part of the summary here, like the collection of revenues related to your uh, streetlight replacement charge, as well as vehicle registration, they're included as revenues that come into the general fund and then get transferred to other funds to help finance capital projects or debt service. Um, this also now currently includes an estimated 6% of increase in the levy with a uh, current remaining deficit of $148,000. The deficit changes slightly as we continue to update and make the budget more accurate. So again, as a reminder, this is just a summary. And we did provide two separate versions of the budget. So as you guys talk through it tonight, 
the version that you received currently is version two, and the version that was received previous to today would be version one. So if you're referencing one or the other, I ask that you distinctly reference those as well. And uh, that concludes what I wanted to say thus far on the general fund. So feel free to- Questions on the away. general fund. Trustee Stokebrand. So where would I find, um, I was curious about our shared revenue and expenditure restraint. I know this is more detailed than, and is there a way I'm supposed to know, or is this, is this like somehow say version two or two? If it's the printout, it is version two. Okay. The, right. Yeah, that's what's right. the, the printout on our desks this is evening. 2.0? Mm-hmm. And that's what was included in the um, digital version of the packet that um, people may be looking at at home. And so where would I find the shared revenue that we got from the state this year that we're expecting for 20? Obviously, we don't know 2025, but um, is that under? Currently, the intergovernmental revenue overall is 1892000 for the proposed 2025 budget. It's on the first page following the presentation of the um, the charts. And so how does that, how do, what did we get for 2024? It, it looks like overall 1.2 to the negative. Um, how are we doing with that 2024 compared to like 2025? We don't know until next year, right? But they give you a, some way to make an estimated guess and because we got like $300,000 more in shared revenue last year than we did. The legislature came up with more money for us. And so how does that look going forward, the extra shared shared revenue commitment from the legislature? So we are currently still uh, waiting for the state to clarify some of the state shared revenue. So that number will be changing up until November. And we, we are typically getting that information into late October. Okay, but you see it going down from this? It's a conservative estimate, yes. And so what's the actual number? Um, it's down because the projected number is down from what was budgeted for 2024. So the budget for 2024 had 597,000 and now we expect to receive 584,000. So I think that was just a difference between what was estimated prior to finding out the numbers from the Department of Revenue. And so the five, 97 will be our 2024 number, correct? Because we'll get it in November. Um, so the 597 was the budget for 2024, and then we expect to receive 584,000 okay. in November for 2024. Okay, and so we left the same for the proposed 2025 budget currently okay. because we're unsure what it will be. Okay. And then, um, so the, the 291 charges for services, the majority of that is for LNA. Um, well, I guess we can go into the other stuff later. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to say that I, I have a problem with the 6% increase, and I, I'm willing to work through the process and see how we can make this happen. Um, the county has said they're looking at 2.8. That's just David Crowley's number. It hasn't been worked through the county board. So that would put residents at 8.8% increase before we our school board is even weighed in. So that's kind of where I, I'm looking at this from. And I understand the difficult challenges here. And I'm glad that you're here leading us through it. Um, but I think it's a time to acknowledge, you know, there's been other times that people think, oh, Shorewood won't be Shorewood without this or that. And the sidewalk snow removal comes to mind. I, know if you've heard about this, but it was a big deal. We used to, the village used to clean all the residentials. And there are still people who would like to see that on this board, but um, we don't do it anymore. And that doesn't necessarily mean, I just think that we have to keep our eye on the prize, core services, health, public safety, um, snow removal garbage, and giving up some things or accepting some things that we haven't done before um, given the challenges we face, is going to be important to consider. Thank you. And for that matter, we will um, discuss the tax levy increase um, at the end in high impact under 2D. Um, so did you have a question? Okay. 
other questions about the general fund. General fund. Oh, I did one more thing about other expenditures. One hundred thirty-five point eight percent increase. That's for debt service. Is that correct? That big increase. Um, from from three ninety six to almost a million dollars. Which page are you on? Uh, I'm on page two? nine of version two point oh. Other under expenditures, other financing uses. That big jump. Oh. Is for debt service? Yes, yes, that's correct. That is uh, debt service expenditures. And the debt service um, amount each year has to do with um, what bonds are sort of coming online, what might be going offline, different interest rates that for different bonding agreements. The general funds portion is likely related to the issuance costs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's variable. That's right. Because we have lots of moving parts within there. I'm navigating there. Okay. Are you seeing almost a million dollars? I'm navigating there. So in That's a summary level item and there is detail behind it. That is Quite a bit down the road. Um, Won't we come to it in the the way that we're walking through the different funds? If we once we start the departments, yes, we will get to it. It's the last department on page twenty five, and uh, it is for actually the seven hundred thousand is the transfer to debt service for the uh, the vehicle registration fee. Oh, and then the two, actually the 234,000 is the vehicle registration fee that's a transfer to the capital projects. And then the 700,000 is the streetlight replacement fee that you'd be collecting in 2025. That's a transfer to debt service. And this is all on page 25. So you can see them listed as separate line items on that page. Okay, thank you. All right, so concluding the general fund. Um, oh, any other village board, I municipal would, court? Yeah, like overall general fund maybe, and then yeah. start on the departments. Okay. Okay, hearing and seeing none. Um, village board. Municipal court. I'll also note that um, we what were as a page. Sure. 14. 14. We were asked to submit um, questions, line item questions um, by 9 a.m. this morning, and those that were received are in front of us with answers. Okay, so page, um, Christina, you want to sure. walk us through, so yeah. municipal court? Yes, page 14, municipal court. Any questions on that one? Well, I guess if we're looking at salaries and wages, 8.7, I thought we were looking at five. Right, so um, I, I will explain on the salaries and uh, wages, as well as all of the related costs like Wisconsin retirement system, health insurance, et cetera, the way the budget is built is there is a spreadsheet with all of the employee salaries. We update it for 2024, and then it gets allocated out to the 2025 budget with the increases that we uh, communicated previously. That's why we give you the total, but the percentages, the way they end up, it's really tough to compare to the prior year. Uh, there's two reasons for this. First of all, every year is different. Here in this specific instance, uh, when we looked in the 2024 budget, we made some changes to the allocations as we reviewed that with staff so that it's more accurate to reality. And so that's why the 2025 budget, there's some salary line items that just look way different than the percentages that you're expecting overall. And so some are higher, some are lower. It all comes out to about the same if you added it all together. And that's why we give you those total numbers. So the, the cost of living adjustment, again, is... 255,000 or yeah, and then 205,000 for the market value adjustment. 
so this is the judge and the clerk. Uh, yes, for municipal court. And what what are the FTEs? Do you know? No idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd have to review the uh, the specific spreadsheet with the salaries. It's all right. Mm -hmm. All right, village manager's office. What page is that? Fifteen. Clerk services is. I had a question though about so where are we with the university? Would that be here? The um twenty four thousand we it was like eight thousand for three different items. One was police electric. Communication, thank you, and DPW. Pardon? DPW. Yep. Oh, Historic sorry. preservation, correct. So did that contract end last year? We're not looking at it before. Five, I'm sorry. Quickly, we're, we're going into year three with the 2025 fiscal year. It was uh, 2022 to 2025, the three-year. Um, so this last year will be implementation. Last year was the, or this current year was the heavy lift from the student groups. Was the what? Like the heaviest lift from all the student groups. So okay. year one was planning, year two was the actual student groups. Year three is just kind of wrapping up with um, any of the faculty or instructors. And so I know we got something on one of them already, but I don't remember. Could we follow up on that? Yep. And then, so is that, is the final payment in here or have we paid in? This should be the final. And is it a line item here or? That 8833, I think you saw 8,300, it was the $25,000 split over three years. Yeah, it's in there. I don't I know what's under okay. contract, contract, contract fees. Fees. Got it. Right. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. Clerk's office. Clerk's department. What page is that? Uh, 16. I could follow on too. I'm guessing the, the minus. 5% is because we had um, openings. That way that number is lower. For the poll workers? Uh, no, I thought I was thinking for the, oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of a different department. Never mind. Okay. Finance? Finance, page 17. Other government. Oh, I did have a question, and I haven't had. To, I think we got the information at about four forty, and I wasn't able to go online. Mm -hmm. um, so, do we have any CAFR or PAPFR in this contract? We do not currently have that in built in to the expenses. So, how much would it cost to get just a general accounting report? You, I think before you had told me in a meeting it was maybe eleven thousand. For one of the reports, yes, for doing an annual comprehensive financial report, but then you you indicated a popular annual financial report, which requires different set of expertise and different people that would do that versus someone like me for the annual comprehensive financial report. So it'd have a different fee. And what would that be? I would estimate another like eight or nine thousand for that. And I for guess the first time we put it together. <laughs> Yeah. So I guess I'm wondering why we don't have that in here. Given our current financial situation, it just seems advisable that we would do something that's a standard practice for um, municipalities. Uh, I think I've mentioned this before. I was at the Wisconsin League of Municipalities webinar, and I specifically said, you know, is it important for us to do these? And the consultant there said, absolutely. And mm -hmm. so I... You know, I know our previous, two previous financial director before did it for many years. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be a, 
an important piece for um, residents to be able to, especially the PAFR, which is supposed to be able to be a more general way. I, there seemed to be a thread in the comments on the poll that people were confused. Why is this coming up now? Um, obviously, we're in a local news desert. So it would seem to behoove us to do what we could to take this document and make it as comprehensible as possible to the average. Mm -hmm. And so I guess I would like to see this come, one of these come into the budget process somehow. Um, you know, we, I'm just wondering where we are with the contract. I know, I think we were looking at different numbers and obviously the first year has got to be the worst coming into a situation where you are ground zero. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, could we make up, I believe we have an option in our contract to change it every year. Could mm -hmm. we look at making an adjustment in our contract to include this for 2025? We could. I Please think what I'd like to do it. is to note that and then at the end of the meeting, we'll see anything that comes up that we want to change, remove, or add. Mm -hmm. um, we would give direction to staff to do that and prepare it for the 14th. Mm -hmm. So I believe we we went for the most expensive monthly plan with LA, yeah. which was 13,000. And I think we started at 11 or 11 mm -hmm. or 12. And it just seems to me that this is something this community needs at this juncture. And it'd be good for us to revisit our contract if we need to, to see if we can get that at the same price or if you would charge us more or can work yeah. with it. It's a possibility it's just that to we build would... it in because we're trying to put the least amount of costs in front of you. Mm -hmm. So, but I have it on the list for the end of this evening. And so that's something, I mean, all the questions you're asking are really good questions. They just can't be answered tonight because it's um, it's a conversation that has to take place. Um, just to jump back to something we were talking about earlier, uh, you talked about the reallocation of um, and wages were recognized. Is it is it right to think of that as a reset so we should have more consistency with that moving forward? Absolutely. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yes. I guess, what do you mean by that? So we're not going to have fluctuations in percentages that are great because we're not going to reassess the allocation moving forward as greatly as we had to this year for the budget process. Just in this in this department? It's no. across the board. Across so oh. for yeah. the wages, the way they come into the budget, we have one big you know, spreadsheet with all of the wage information and increases so that we can build in the changes as you guys decide them and then allocate it out in the budget to all of the funds and departments. So that spreadsheet is what we changed for the allocation. There was a different allocation previously for the 2024 budget and we trued it up this year. So then moving forward, we should have an alignment in your trend data so you can compare from year to year those percentages much so then you're easier. assuming the five percent so you know it, it's not about um it's not about increasing like giving a cola or something like that it's more an accounting method yeah, mechanism so like too. where the the court department said 48 mm -hmm. right 4.8 so i guess a great example would be our department of public works right we take um a person from there and they are in the general fund in sewer and in water and sometimes in various departments they're in. And so that's the allocation we're talking about because we're taking one salary that could be $50,000 and we're putting it in three different spots. So depending on how we did that from year to year, your increases in the wages line amount is going to change. We want it to be uniform, but in the past, uh, we discovered it maybe wasn't aligned with the, the reality here. So we reallocated it for 2025 and that should be the same allocation moving forward. So we shouldn't have these fluctuations again. And that used to happen. I remember Mark would, there'd be an accounting practice that would change from time to time. And so one area would look really strange. But if, again, to your point, when you add it all up, it's not. So Part of it is we're new to the process. So we're right. taking a look with fresh eyes and wanting to make sure it's accurate. Mm-hmm. Uh, other government administration? What page is that? Oh, sorry. 18. 18, 18 thank you. Mm -hmm. 
All right, hearing none, um, the police, which is? It starts on 19 well, and ends on 19. Yes. I have brought this up before and was basically told there's nothing we can do, but I'm going to bring it up again just because $37,000 in credit card fees to me, um, you know, and that's just one department. So we apparently have, and I, I don't want to misrepresent this, but we apparently have a complicated billing process for credit card fees, but I would really not like to not be the one paying Visa and Master when someone uses their credit card to pay for a, a parking ticket. And I would look forward in the future to any way that we could get away from that. Are you familiar with this? Is another discussion. A policy it change. Could, yeah, it's a policy change. It could come back and we could look at it in 2026. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And give the our team chance to get caught up with the research that we've done in the past. I had a question on the police. I don't see it on this page. So I know I saw it in here somewhere though, um, on the request for cameras. Um, oh. What's your question? Uh, just can you explain what it is and why it's, why it's such a high priority? Sure. So the camera system that we're using right now, the MVDR or MDVR, whatever it's called, we had two systems within our police department. One of those units has failed. The current unit that we're operating on is at end of life, and we are operating bare bones with the police department, and we're statutorily required to utilize camera systems in certain areas of our police department and conducting certain function functions so are so they like body cams that kind of thing or no 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 the cameras yeah like the For the police the, department in the building oh correct right okay. so okay. all interviews have to be recorded booking oh, okay. rooms have to be recorded okay. and those types of things so we're operating right now at bare bones so um minimal exterior security predominantly in those areas where we are statutorily required to operate. Okay. And that's on the critical list? It is on the critical list, okay. yes. Yep, that's, that's good. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's the 9,800. All right, planning and development. Are we at page 20? Page 20. All right, other public safety? 21. And this pertains to the North Shore Fire Department, correct? Bayside Communications, anything else? Health Department. Oh yeah, Health Department. Crossing Guards. Crossing Guards. Um, dispatch Services, at Water Beach Lifeguards. Yes. I am wondering about with Lake Drive being under reconstruction next year. I'm just, I have a lot of questions about Atwater Beach and Atwater Park. And I don't think we have a WISDOT meeting until January to find out, you know, what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, I was told that we do have a vendor next year to continue the lifeguards. I believe Chris indicated someone's willing to come back and do it. Um, so that's great. Um, but I just, I do wonder. You know, thirty-one thousand dollars for. I just wonder who's who's going to be um, able to get to it. So, so you're proposing that it could potentially be a savings that we would not have lifeguards next year. Is that something you want to discuss? I just I'm wondering how it's going to function. I'm mm -hmm. wondering how it's going to be open. How people are going to access it. Um, but I, what I would recommend we won't know by November. 
Exactly. So what I would recommend is that we put that um, on our little list. And then if there's the, if there's the majority of the board who would like to consider not funding it for next year, because that's really our only choice at this point, um, then we would direct staff to um, pursue that. So that's how I would handle it as the chair. You wouldn't be able to do a reduced schedule or something. I mean, if we find out WSDOT is like, well, we're going to make it really possible. For we don't have that the... information now. So what we would do is either fund it or not fund it. And if, if we could reduce it, we can always reduce the contract because we haven't issued the contract yet. But if it's not in the budget at all, then we wouldn't have that conversation with WSDOT. But you raise a really good point. If the street is torn up, it's kind of hard to access that park. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, it was public <laughs> works would be yeah. next. Thank you on page 22. And it goes on to page 23 and 24. And 20, 24 is the last page. And as a reminder, this is a department that's split into the general fund here, the water, and the sewer utility. All right. And there were a couple of questions related to public works that were submitted, and we have those answers in front of us. And they'll be included in the um, minutes or the amended packet online. Um, uh, additional questions. Did we not get, we have no future for the recycling grants ever again, or that was a that, nice steady revenue source. We did receive that. And yeah, it was, I got it for we, we've added it back in since. Pardon? We've added it back in since. Oh. We just needed to do research on what the amount was. So that was an oversight that you found. Thank you. Thank you. I have some public, public works questions. Um, might be for the end, um, but we, I noticed that there was a line item for um, $95,000 for electricity for the streetlights. And so I'm wondering if we know, you know, the wattage of the new bulbs or the new fixtures we might get, be getting our LEDs are much more efficient. Do we know how that compares to what we have now and how much energy savings we might see? He's free to answer, but this came up during the public comments too. And we did indicate that as the savings come to fruition, we definitely would decrease that in the future budget years. Yeah. I'm not sure it's clear exactly what those savings would be yet. Is that the same yeah. question that you submitted earlier? Yeah. And we did receive a an answer you, to that. Okay. Did you get to well, see it? Yeah, I mean, it just kind of said. Okay. I, I would say that for 2025, those savings would be minimal. Right. Um, 2025 is a construction year. And we will be reconstructing approximately one fifth of the village. Yep. So, um, you know, even if you make some assumptions um, based on data about the reduction in cost, you're doing that over a small segment of the total system and a small portion of the year. Right, right. And so I guess, and maybe this will be more in the big ticket discussion, but, you know, we're going to be asked for, um, you know, whether to, on the street lights with levy or with new fee and so i'm wondering if there's could be a mechanism where you sort of build that in you know maybe through an ordinance where you say you know as we get these savings we dedicate that to the cost of the project rather than bonding for 17.4 million maybe you bond for 16 million 15 million you can sort of get an idea of the revenue and that way you're you're paying less interest over 30 years reducing the cost of the whole project that's that's why i was asking the that sounds like a great thing to put into yeah. policy for capital projects. Yeah. So when we, if if we decide to adopt um, this, for example, this streetlight charge, we would write an ordinance, and that would be a great thing to consider for mm -hmm. it. Right. Okay. So and that would occur in early January, or it would incur occur. Yeah. In yeah December. <laughs> it would ASAP. occur soon. So. Coming to a committee near you. Um, so I guess what I would recommend is additional questions or suggestions that you have. 
you can submit them, it wouldn't necessarily impact the budget that we adopt. It would impact the policy that we would adopt. Okay. Thank you. Very good question. Yeah, I really appreciate it. There are reasons some of these are in blue for 2025 that I don't understand. Okay. So, okay, disregard. And I added just a question about the, I noticed the um, garage new hire, $36,000 for health insurance. Did we hire two mechanics? That seems awfully high for one. Yes, we did hire two mechanics. Oh, yeah, it's in our... In a different One mechanic was hired, and there's an additional 0.5 FTE that was added as a mechanic to the shop. Previously existed as a mechanic in the shop. So it's like a job share. The person spends half their time as a mechanic. And what's the other? They do signs, elections, setup, street maintenance. Okay, thank you. And so... But the, the 36,000 was for, I mean, the 269% increase was just the new hire for the health person. We already had the 0. 0.5. We can, we can show you the details Okay. on that specific item if you'd like to see them later. But I guess for one and a half, that would, you know, make sense. Family. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'll just say that I would appreciate seeing the detailed um, pages. So if those can be uh, forwarded to us after the meeting, that would be great. Sure. All right, that concludes. Uh, oh, I did. Oh, yeah. so was there a place where we have um, the numbers on staff for forestry historically going back 10 years and also the summer interns? If we're looking at that staff costs. That was provided to us. Does anyone know which page? Yeah, I can provide the answer. So we have um, three positions with the title of Forester. And in the public works world, um, an arborist is an educational credential that comes with national certification. Our lead forester is also an arborist. Um, so is the, is the lead one of the three? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, our horticulturalist, I can't have a problem saying that one name. Um, who is the only full-time staff person responsible for the maintenance of all of our park and open spaces, is also a certified arborist, but serves as a backup to forestry and generally only performs field forestry work in an emergency or a staff sh shortage. Um, all of the positions are cross-trained. Foresters are pr the primary staff for leaf collection and typically perform the straight time winter maintenance work. Um, for all intensive purposes, none of the staffing model has changed in the last 20 years for how forestry has been provided and the people sitting in those positions. With regards to interns, I believe that we've had a handful over the last eight years. Um, that's in a different page of the FAQ. Do you have any additional questions? Uh, where was the uh, the summer intern number? Is there a line item for that? Are you thinking of seasonal, the summer seasonal? Yeah. Oh, like how many positions? Line item it, then. It's under beautification. In the wages line with FTEs. Parks and beautification. Is that would that be the right department? Under parks then? and beautification. Horticultural intern. So there's one forestry, one horticulture, for a total of two, two summer interns for landscaping. So to recap the question, these we have um, there's basically no one. We don't have three or four people just sitting at Public Works not doing anything if there's no forestry to be done. There, 
all working all the time and cross trained. So that would be the, I think the perception, the concern from the community was that we had these specialized positions and that we had added them at a time when, you know, we had staffing, we had um, budget concerns. Mm -hmm. So that eliminates that concern. Understood. All right, thank you. Let's look at uh, special revenues. And just to, to note, we have, um, you know, obviously like benchmark times, um, but obviously this is, you know, our most important job of the year. So we're gonna walk through it. Um, so 2B special revenue that includes library, senior resource center, Shorewood today. Page 26, start with the library. Mm -hmm. Questions on the library budget. Shout out, mm -hmm. <laughs> director. Okay, and as you'll recall, we, um, it's a collaborative approach. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is the library, you have a, an assistant director, I believe? And, okay, so then are you officially at full staff? Mm -hmm. As of the 21st, they will be fully staffed with an assistant director. Congratulations. All right, questions on Senior Resource Center or Shorewood today? Pages 32 to 33 for the Senior Services Center. Shorewood today is on page 34. Oh, yes. If we're looking for low hanging fruit, it would be important to look at Shorewood today. I think it'd be good to know what we could do without, it's important to the village, but it'd be good to know what it would do on its own without a subsidy, what that would mm -hmm. look like. I think, are we in the first year of a three year contract? We have. So, I yeah, what I would do is. I don't know what. Yeah, if there's um if there's a way to look at a new model for this without a subsidy. If um well, I will defer to village manager, but in my mind that falls within a a policy discussion or a service level discussion because it's contract related and so we would take it up in 2025. Um that said, if there's the consensus from the board that we're interested in not funding that at the level that it's or not funding it at all, then we would direct staff to bring back information pertaining to that. But as far as a structural difference with the program, I think that would be with a service level. That's what I would recommend is that it's a service level discussion. Uh, village manager? Um, first, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we're in year one of a three year. Yeah, we just, correct, okay. And then isn't the, the production is different than the printing contract, are there two? Or is the printing one a year to year? The printing is year to year okay. and the um, professional services that we get for um, the basic writing and assembly of the magazine, the village's portion among all uh, stakeholders is, I mean, next year it'll escalate to roughly I think 53, 5,400. Right. So so we, refle we reflect the total cost right. within our oh, budget sure. because we hold Correct. the contract, but that doesn't mean that we're paying that Correct. whole line. Item, so. mm -hmm. For those of you at home. Okay. Uh, debt service? Page 36. And we answered Trustee Stoke Brand's question from the beginning of the evening, right? For debt service. Mm -hmm. Other questions re related to debt service? I didn't have time to read the, the email came at 440 and I was not available between 440 and six. So do you mind? Uh, yeah, I don't remember exactly.
So you can direct me to which page of the yeah memo here. I although okay. they're not yeah they're. You can try to read it. it. It's probably oh. starting on page page nine. Nine. So I'm not sure which. I don't see a question regarding debt service. Yeah. I was there a, a specific It was about item? kid three. Oh. Oh. Number 44. Oh, okay. That was based on the Wisconsin Oaks of Shorewood assessment? That's the note that was cut off there for you. Mm -hmm. And so can you explain that? Like we used to pay 311000 in developer oh. subsidies. And now we're paying six hundred and seventy seven in subsidy. Did what kind is it? I will have to get you detail okay. on the contracts. Great question. That TID is structured differently than the other ones. It's a pay go, so those fluctuations are recorded. All right. Capital projects. Starting on page 37, we do have the detailed listing, which includes all of the requested items. Mm -hmm. We did add one most recently for the library fire alarm system control panel, which came up as a fire uh, and was added at $35,000. So that is why it is larger than the amount you saw previously requested at our last meeting. However, only the items that are noted as a rating of one priority which is the critical items are included then on pages 39 to 40 for the actual budget preparation for the capital projects fund. And then as a reminder, the capital projects fund is still projected to get the same 6% increase in property taxes as the rest of the village's properties, property tax levy. However, this amount will then be an increase to your fund balance, which will help offset those future capital projects so that we don't have to borrow as much for them. Mm -hmm. So again, I know historically we've separated mm -hmm. what we fund with borrowing and what we fund with our tax levy. Mm -hmm. But in order to help offset future borrowings, we can mm -hmm. continue to increase and collect our tax levy in our capital projects fund and save for when those projects start breaking ground. So knowing that we have some big projects breaking ground in the next few years, we can set these monies aside to help allay some of those future costs. So that is something I wanted to point out because if you look at the very bottom, there's a net change in fund balance of about 600,000. So that's what would then carry forward and we'll be able to use that to help fund some of the bigger projects and not have to borrow for the fiscal year 2026 budget process by that $600,000. And so how do you do that if you're supposed to do a? So it's still a balanced budget because you're covering all of your expenses. When it's imbalanced, you don't have enough revenues to cover your expenses. Um, but you are, we are allowed to keep reserves mm -hmm. within those guidelines. And I had a, I had a question about the Emerald Ash Borer is this, I believe, is this the first year of a new three-year, like this is the last three-year cycle. cycle to get rid of this dreaded? Mm -hmm. I question whether that is one at this point, considering everything we're looking at. Um, I could see some flexibility on that. Our feedback from staff was, you, if we don't, do it this year, then we do it next year. Again, it's a process. So we can say it about it in the budget. Things. Yeah. But the other question could, I have could. is why I think we were going to move um, village wide initiatives for the board, Juniper with support, Aruba 
This is technology. Was that supposed to be moved to village manager? I'm sorry, what's the question? Um, under the board, village-wide initiatives, looks like IT. And uh, the line items, uh, when I added the $35,000 for the fire alarm, the line items got mixed up. So the IT is actually for the fire alarms and it's 13,500 for IT. So and yes, the, the Juniper will be listed under the village manager's budget, not under the board. I think it was just- a, Yeah, just the mm -hmm. put it in the wrong spot. Under. So we have none, the village board has none at this point. And then I also wanted to ask, what about the, um, it's later on the agenda tonight, the um, the village, H, village center HVAC. HVAC, should I see that in here? It was funded in 24. Oh. I guess just a general question. I mean, how close are some of these twos to being ones? Looking ahead. Any read? I mean, obviously they're all from a wide range of uh, departments and what have you, but I was you know, wondering if there's a read on how soon we're going to be seeing some of these other items come back. I think that's going to depend on who you ask. I had a similar question on the, the masonry repairs, the stairs at the police department that listed as twos. Like, does that become more expensive if we put it off for a year longer? I Everything go, does. I, I go with Rebecca. It does, but it's all um, it's all a policy decision. So. Is that masonry repair uh, part where that those kind of raccoons or that salt shed in the back? What was that structure that was uh, that was kind of damaged that needed the mason repair? Warehouse. Where? The warehouse. Okay. And you guys presented that. We saw pictures. Is that is that what this is here? This is different than that. Okay. What did we do with the what? What did we end up doing with that particular bill and process? Okay. Coming back to us. Okay. Thanks. We're coming to a, a public works committee meeting near you. Fantastic! I cannot wait. Stay tuned. <laughs> Tickets go on sale Monday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. I'm starting to get a little silly. All right. Moving on to, oh, uh, TID funds. We asked the TID three question. Uh, moving on to enterprise funds, parking, water, sewer utilities. Parking starts on page 44 to 45. And this I, fund is mostly just an allocation when it comes to the salaries and those types of items, just so you make note of that. And I'd ask a question about the net position and thank you for the answer. Any other? Any other questions on enterprise funds? All right, we can w wrap that up. Okay. That's all of them. It's all yeah. the funds. All right, thank you, everyone. So um, that leaves us with uh, one item, 2D, um, discuss the high impact options. And the way that I would ask that we um, do it is that I have an outline here that um, mirrors the email that Rebecca, a village manager sent to us last week um, asking for our questions in advance. Um, and I would simply like to walk through that as a decision-making tree, if you will, um, and then see where we're at. Because uh, again, my goal is to leave very clear communication at the end of the evening. So the first question becomes um, with the general fund operational budget. So I just want to get a you know basic level of whether we're in agreement um, here because that determines what we discuss. So. 
we so the budget um, before us is maintaining current service levels and that's based on you know we didn't ask for service level cuts this year our community surveys consistently report um, a high support for um, maintaining service le levels often increasing as trustee stopran pointed out with the uh, sidewalk snow removal um, and so um, I want to do a check in. And then having that service level discussion as part of our 26 process, but starting far in advance so that it can be a responsible, very data driven discussion. So consensus? Yes, I'm in favor. Okay. So, yeah, okay. same. I agree. I think, you know, maintaining our service levels is one of the most important things we can do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same. I mean, it's um, if we're going to make changes to service levels, I mean, that's a big discussion and it's not something that we can rush or. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We need to understand what we're going to be doing, the implications, and as well as you know what it will take to implement any changes in the impacts on staffing, et cetera. So we're not going to do that in, in time for this one. All right, thank you. Plus, I would just point out that we do talk about that often. I mean, we are. This is that's always an ongoing discussion. I don't want to give the impression that this is something we just don't ever discuss here because mm -hmm. we do every two weeks, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about these types of things and, um, you know, there, there isn't just some amount of money that we're spending that we somehow shouldn't, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's no reckless spending going on. So I, you know, I think maintaining the service levels is, especially for this year is so important. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with that, um, so we're all on board with, that's how we're going to move forward. Um, so then the question becomes um, within the um, general fund budget, operational budget, there is a 3% COLA increase um, included in the proposed budget. And so our, basically we need to decide, given that we support current service levels, are we in support of a 3% COLA? And then are we in, in favor of, uh, in support of the market wage adjustments um, proposed in the budget? Because if we aren't in support of those things, then the deficit changes and we go from there. So that's why I'm asking. Mm -hmm. I'd be in support of all three of those. I think it's very important that we support our uh, public employees and uh, bring them to the point um, at kind of the bare minimum from uh, sort of a, a broader reach in different communities in the North Shore, I think we need to bring our public employees to a spot that is competitive with those with those different communities. I'm in support of all three as well. And, you know, costs have gone up for everybody. Every every government's dealt with this. Every company is dealing with this. And, you know, the the services and the government necessities that we rely on in Shorewood, it takes professional people to implement all those programs and, uh, you know, fight crime and plow the snow and all these things, uh, you know, it costs money and it costs a lot of money when you lose people as well. So um, it's just, it's just part of having a local government. These things cost money. The people that implement all these services got to yeah, pay salaries and benefits. Yeah, I mean, we're in a competitive marketplace, so we have to be able to compete for talent. Otherwise, you know, we risk losing it and it's more expensive to replace somebody than it is to pay him correct wage anyway. Trustee Stokrian? I guess I'm wondering, so besides the 3% COLA and then the 2% market adjustment, the, the third piece is then to bring the five key positions up. Is that correct? There were five All of positions. that is already in the budget. It's part of the overall 5%. 2% is for the market value for all of the employees to bring them up, not just the top five. And then 3% is the COLA. So the 2% includes those five positions that were deemed to it be- It certainly does. Okay. 
I guess I need to see things in context. Um, I think it is important. And I definitely want to support the 3% um, across the board COLA. Looking through the employee benefits, it looked like we we're pretty generous with vacation and we're also pretty generous. We It looks like maybe we could get a better deal on health insurance from um, looking at the numbers from what other, the other communities, Brown Deer, Cedarburg, Sussex, um, it looked like we're paying more than anybody. And so I guess that's something I would like to see. I'd also like to know going forward, we have cars and gas for three top de top department level people. I'd like to know, is that is that standard quo? Is that status quo? Is that what every other department does? Um, because that's a pretty nice perk. And so those are my concerns. I guess I would like to see in the context of everything else, I can't really commit to those numbers until I know what other decisions I'd have to make to fund that. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is that you support the 3% COLA um, or is it that you need more information or that you would are getting, you want more information so that you can propose some change in benefits that would affect I just would need to costs. see where the revenue would come from to fund that. What decisions would I have to make to fund that? Because mm -hmm. I right now I can't tell you. Okay. Um, I don't want to speak for staff, but my my understanding is that the six percent tax levy it's a it's a tax levy increase that we would be looking to to fund th those increases. Is that correct? Yes, any increases additional to what we have would then increase the levy further. Yes. Right. Yeah, and I can't support the 6%. Okay. I mean, I think mm -hmm. inflation currently is 2.5 for 2024. Social Security raise next year will be 2.5%. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a lens to be aware of. That's, that's true, but there were quarters in the past where inflation was eight, nine percent, um, you know, and we didn't have a levy increase, um, you know, like that for those years. So, I mean, I think that's there's a bigger picture with when talking about inflation. I was on the budget and finance. I was chair all those years, I believe, and we took the staff recommendation for those increases every year. All right. Um yeah, my comments on this would be that I do um, support the 3% COLA in the market wage adjustments. Um, the data, I really appreciate the graphs that were shown, um, showing that history of the CPI adjustments and lack thereof. Um, so it, the data definitely shows we've been underpaying um, and we haven't been adjusting. And I feel that we have two really important jobs, and one is um, managing a healthy organization, um, which is of great value to the community, and the second is, and they're not in that order, um, being good stewards of resources. And so I think both of these decisions, while they mathematically um, result in an increase of something, an increased cost, let me put it that way, um, they are an overall value for the community um, uh, moving forward. And so I think it's a good use of resources. Um, okay, so with that, then um, thank you, Trustee Stokebrand, for bringing it up. Being that the majority of the board is in support of these two um, salary and wage adjustments, then um, are we in support of a 6% um, tax levy increase because anything short of that leaves us a deficit in the general fund um, and the the two other high impact op um, option or strategies that are presented this or recommended don't impact that general fund bottom line it impacts borrowing in the in the future which is also very important for a diversified um, budget strategy so, Trustee Ersing, <laughs> or do you want me to flip it? <laughs> you know, I you know, Shore's in a very difficult uh, position right now. We've got a lot of major infrastructure projects coming up. We've got the federally mandated lead laterals to replace, um, and also, you know, for the past you know several years, I think that the the board has been focused on zero to two percent tax increases, and two percent would have been high for past boards. 
And you know what I what we've seen now is that these projects probably could have been done in the past from past boards, but they haven't. And now we've reached a critical point uh, in a lot of our infrastructure needs that everything has kind of failed at once. So this is an extremely difficult decision, I think, for all of us. Um, we're all residents, and uh, we all care very much about this community, um, and we care very much about the health of the community. I think as trustees, we are not looking at today and tomorrow. We've got to look at five to 10 years down the line, and uh, we've got to make sure that this community is as is, is healthy and sustainable as it possibly can. And I know we are tasked with making these tough decisions, and I wish there was a magic wand where we could correct a lot of this stuff but there's not. And we're in a position right now where we have to kind of stop the bleeding and take care of a lot of the problems that we have. Um, you know, uh, doing the 6% increase is, you know, it's a tough pill to swallow, but it's, it's, it's an absolute necessity necessity in my mind. You know, uh, unfortunately I'd, I'd probably be in the minority here, but I'd, I'd be interested in, in looking, exploring the 8% increase and not doing uh, a lot of the uh, separate fees that we are going to add on to this, which is what could be refuse, what could be a wheel tax, what could be all these different fees. I'd much rather wrap it up in the taxes and uh, and be done with it. But uh, I can see myself being at 6%. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's a tough pill to swallow, but this community has a lot of needs. It's falling apart. Um, it's a very old community. And, uh, you know, we're hoping with this board, the buck stops here, and we're able to fix a lot of what's uh, what's ailing this community. Not only that, everything gets expensive every year. We we don't do these things. A lot of these things could be done 10 years ago. They would have been much cheaper. We're in a position now. We've got to do them now, or else they're just going to keep on getting more expensive, more expensive, and another board's going to have to pass them, and that's uh, that they're going to have to pass the buck back to the resident at a, a price that may be tripled. So mm -hmm. I stand at a 6%. Okay, thank you. If I may, um, and Trustee Sokrian, you brought up a good point that um, – in the past, you know, staff has recommended the the lower um, tax levy increase. I wanted to share the perspective. No, I said, I said that we approved every staff recommended raise for the past three years that I've been a trustee. Oh, we took the raises recommended by staff and approved them. Okay, thank you. So it's nothing that the board came up with on their own. Great. I wanted to share a little perspective um, because uh, in the time that I came on the board. Um, and this data that shows, I mean, it really started in 2015 or so. Um, and I support it. And at the time, you know, we had, um, new trustees that had run on a platform of, you know, no new taxes, if you will, or that taxes were too high. And that's what they heard on the doors. And so I really joined with that. Um, and in my mind, you know, I always thought, You've, you've got to um, you've got to increase the tax levy at the rate of increased services because we'll you know get in the hole. Um, but the reality was at that time we had the momentum, we had the votes, and we did have tools at our side. We had one-time revenues, and so I really opened myself up to that and said, "Hey, for the first time." let's listen to the residents and let's give them what they want and, you know, give them that lowest um, tax levy increase. And I was really proud to be a part of that. And we found compromises and things like that. Um, but the reality was it was a short term option. So those, so the community benefited those years that we could do that. We don't have those tools now. Um, and there were two things that started to happen and it's not a blame thing. It's just, it's two different approaches. So, um, it's the same with, you know, you can over levy and save up and pay for a sewer improvement, or you can borrow. And, and so the people that are paying for it, um, and putting, creating that, um, that reserve to pay cash aren't getting the benefit of that improvement. They may move out of town, whatever, or you borrow for it and finance it. And then everybody gets the benefit right away. And then everyone's paying it off together. Two different approaches. It's not a right or wrong. You know, boards and and government, uh, local governments make those decisions all the time. So we have. I really appreciate that we've used different approaches um, as boards moving forward. Um, but we did in 2021. We made um, an adjustment to the capital 
um, fund because we had been to get to that below 1% um, tax levy increase or just over 1%, you had to defer capital replacements. And so we were in a big hole with that. And so um, Director Manuelson, you know, proposed that we kind of course correct there in 2021 and start um, replacing things at a rate of, you know, spend 450 thousand dollars a year on capital replacements and so that's how that started to to just kind of get out of that hole and then the second um course correct was recommending to move the fire hydrant charge to the water utility and that was another way of kind of just creating more um tax levy room in anticipation of these increased costs um so again we have been making these changes um gradually over the past years and now we're doing the wage adjustment that's what we're really course correcting for right now um and then the two proposed charges uh give us more um, capacity in borrowing and more uh, capacity in tax levy increase to address forecasting challenges that we see, you know, real costs that are coming down the road. Um, so I think it is completely appropriate now that given that the one-time revenues are not available, um, given that uh, we have data to show these things um, and, uh, you know, we have a different mindset, um, I think it is the right time to change that approach and change that policy and um, I don't blame anyone for it. I think it was a, gr a great job listening to the community and trying our darndest to give the community what they were asking for. And now it's just that we can't do that. So that's, I just wanted to share that perspective. Um, and I appreciate everyone listening to that. So I guess it goes without showing that I support a 6% increase because that's what we need to do to deliver those services. Uh, Trustee McGovern or anyone else? Sure. On regarding six percent, I could live with it, you know, something in that ballpark, six percent or so, just because of the, you know, the needs that we have to fund on government necessities, government services, and you know, we are somewhat in this position because we previous boards delayed things or put off some of these hard decisions, and you know, I can't help but notice that we'd be having a little bit easier conversation if we had more taxpayers here to share that tax burden, more residents sending students to the schools here and bringing in more money from the state that way. And, um, you know, I didn't run for village board just to find ways to spread out the pain in different years. I ran to try to help the village grow and help the community improve over the long run. And, um, you know, I'm happy to try to get through tonight and whatever we have to do for for next year but I do think we have to come back to this question of how do we um how do we grow our tax base how do we help new people come in how do we help make it affordable for people that are renting apartments now by increasing the supply of housing there's there's lots of options out there we discussed a um, development that would have added about 50 units to the village hall parking lot and 80,000 in tax revenue every year, probably for the next 100 years. So these are the kind of things that we as trustees and we as a community need to be looking at. And um, But having said all that, I'm kind of just in the situation we're in. I don't love it, but I, th I think I'm okay with the 6%. We need it. Right, probably supporting is not the right word. It's like accepting that that is where we're at and that's how we get to moving forward. So Trustee Lynn? Yeah, no, thank you. Um, so yeah, I, I certainly support the 6% increase. And I just want to start by thanking staff and the board for, for working together to get down to 6%. You know, I, my original um, support was for 8%. And I'm, I'm glad to see we were able to, you know, figure out a way to get that to 6%. Uh, with regards to it being the levy specifically, I think this is the best way for us to raise money. I think it's the smartest option. Um, it's a way to collect tax tax revenue for us evenly and at a way that can be deducted from people's um, federal taxes. Um, so I think that's the smartest option for us going forward. And I just, again, want to reiterate, you know, my general thanks to everyone who pays taxes in this community, because this community is so wonderful and, and we feel, I feel so lucky to get to live here. Um, and like many of my friends and family who live here, 
you know, we understand it's going to cost a lot of money to live here. That's that's the point. There's a small number of people who pay the taxes. It's it's the base is not spread out between that many people to pay it. So we have to pay a higher chunk than other communities per square foot. Um, but what we get for that is such an incredible community um, and that we're all so lucky to be a part of and that we're so fortunate to have the opportunity to work together to keep this place as amazing as it is. And and for me, when I look at the future of this community, you know, I want things to stay the way that they are, um, you know, as much as humanly possible because it is so great here. So um, for me, if it costs a little bit more, it's, it's worth it. And um, this is, I think the smartest way for us to do it, that knowing that the cost is more, this is the, the proper approach. Thank you, Trustee Stoprian. Thank you. I'd like to thank staff, Rebecca, Chris, Boya, everyone here, LNA, especially uh, Christina and David. Uh, I'm sorry you have to come into the situation, but here we are. I do also applaud you for bringing up the need to diversify our revenue stream. Mark Emanuelson told us, told us about this on more than one occasion. He said, we need to diversify our revenue stream and we didn't do anything. And I guess I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. I don't think people were derelict in their duty as an elected official for not taking on things sooner because I'm spending other people's money. And so I wanna make sure that the need is really there. And the thing about the the diversity in revenue streams is that it it makes you a stronger potential person group to go out and raise money. So I want our bond rating to be as high as it possibly be because we're going to get the best rates. So we're not AAA, we're AAA two plus, if I recall correctly. And it'd be great to be AAA. Um, one of the ways I think we might do this, I'm no expert, but the staff is recommending that we diversify our revenue streams. And so as much as everyone says, don't nickel and dime me to death. I mean, I did some counting on the parking meters. My off the cuff count showed about half wanted them and about half didn't want them. But the thing that I think is missing in the discussion is how we we need to, just for stability as an economy, I mean, for many years, there, there was a bump here where real estate was not a good investment, like 07, 08, it was bad. Um, I mean, everybody kept their investment, but it wasn't what it had been. And it's going great now again, but I think you have to realize it can be cyclical. And it's important for us to think about these extra revenue streams just from a stability standpoint. Um, it's a more conservative way to go. I understand that. But I think if there's two places you want you want conservatives in your life, it's for um, your surgeon and your financial advisor. <laughs> um, I think this is the way to go for us because um, I understand the deductibility argument. You know, it's capped at this point for some residents. But the bigger thing to me is making this village economy more stable. And um, that's going to be the fees. And I, I, that's why I think the other thing about the stability, as I said from the webinar with the Wisconsin League of Municipalities, bond rating agencies like stability. And going from a past history of 2%, doubling it to 4 I can go along with that. Tripling it to 6 that's not the stability of the bond market wants. Thank you. Trustee Arndorfer? Yeah, uh, there's not a lot that hasn't been said at this point. I mean, I don't think anybody wants to um, implement a 6%, but based on the reality that we're looking at, um, I, I think that's the most palatable option um, in addition to some of the other moves that we're going to have to make just based on the real shortfall we're facing and you know the reality. I mean, there's no silver bullet in terms of any kind of, I mean, even if we do look at service reduction, I mean, there's no silver bullet there. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, the, you know, the, the, the lead service issue is, I mean, a real game changer for us as a community. And there's no real good answer for that either, um, unfortunately. Um, as that had, it's just not, as we've discussed, it's not just the laterals that involves a whole overhaul of our entire water infrastructure given its age and viability so um it's a tough spot mm -hmm. um but yes I, I think six is as palatable as we're gonna get mm -hmm. thank you 
I think the one other thing that I'll add is just that reminder of, um, you know, one of the themes that came back in the engagement poll was um, to have the commercial property districts pay more. Um, and the way, you know, we can't have two different tax rates, that's illegal. Um, but what we can do is support development and redevelopment. And um, because that increases the tax base of the commercial district and um, offsets the burden of, you know, if, if the commercial district is only generating 20% of our tax revenue now, and that tax base continues to grow with development, um, then it becomes a little bit more like, wouldn't it be great if they paid 25% or 30%? Um, and so then those policy decisions around uh, not only development, but also code and, you know, and um, form and use and all those things. We just redid our code and not to give a part an ulcer, um, but we have expensive land. And so if we only have four stories, you know, and I'm not saying that I want eight story buildings or anything like that, but it's just that every decision that we make along the road, mm -hmm. now that we're in this context, I think we do need to tie it back to our long-term stability and, um, and our financial picture. And I really look forward to doing that. Um, so, because that's another kind of uh, deficit that we created for ourselves was, you know, really um, backing away from development for six years. Um, so there's part of tax levy limits is it's tied to new construction. So we're really lucky that we've had two private developments um, go up and that's gonna be really positive and we need to be creative and and um, and look forward to. So the reality is we do have different tools. Some of them are presented this evening and some of them we'll look at next year. And then some of them seem not so related, but they really are. And I look forward to that. All right, so with that, um, since we've concluded, did you get those that direction then? Okay. Um, so moving on to the capital fund, I think I've heard, is everyone in support of funding critical needs now um, with the idea of the policy development and, okay. Those are the yeah. ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. funding the ones. Funding the ones. Okay. So if we're in consensus there, then we don't need to talk about the detailed list of capital requests um, this evening, but thank you very much coming to a committee near you. Um, and then the two um, charges that uh, policy decisions around charges that are uh, recommended um, and reflected in the budget as placeholders would be the street light system replacement plan um, charge and also the vehicle registration fee. So going with the street light re replacement plan charge, um, are we in support of that um, so that we know whether uh, to consider other levers or um, staff needs to know where to go. Uh, I think those are the two that, that I could support, um, streetlight being the, the number one, but you know, I, I'm, you know, again, with all the different fees, I'd rather things be just kind of wrapped into, uh, property taxes and, and not have to do all the additional fees, but I could get behind those two and, um, and not the others. I would say, you, you know, yes to the streetlight charge um if we can find some way to maybe lower the bonding amount along the lines of what i was discussing earlier i think there's a real potential for that um and then the vehicle registration fee i think this one really makes a lot of sense i think people understand that um a lot of our expenses come you know when you when you own a car there's a lot of expenses for the local government in whether it's roads or um, other infrastructure associated with streets. Um, I, I saw some of the, there's some comments saying, you know, Milwaukee County already has that. Why would I have to pay that twice? And it's, well, if you have a car like I do, I got two of them actually, you, you know, I drive on village roads, I drive on county roads. I know all that costs money. Um, and I think this could also be um, a source of funding for traffic calming measures. Uh, Wauwatosa is looking at implementing this and dedicating all of the money do traffic calming. They've got a reckless driving problem like other communities in Milwaukee County, probably worse than ours. Um, but they're, they're so, something that they're looking at, um, just not even just to cover a hole in the budget, but to actually improve things. So 
And I got the sense from the public meetings that I attended that, you know, this was a fee that people maybe didn't love, but they were probably more on board with this than some of the other things that we've been looking at. And I think it's just because people understand that, you know, having road infrastructure costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Good. Trustee Lynn? I, I would concur similarly, I think, especially with the streetlight system replacement charge. I mean, that's just that's a, such a direct and immediate problem that needs to be fixed, and there's only one way to do it, so I'm okay with that. So I guess I had this, this was one of my questions about, so would the, the wheel tax, if we approve it, would be set in a segregated account? We would use it for perhaps, like, is it too late to do this for 25, though? My understanding was if we didn't approve it in September, like to work with the state on oh. vehicle registrations that were due, they would start in January. So is it actually too late for 25? It's not too late for 25, but they do give a minimum 90 days in order to implement and requires the passage of an ordinance. And so that would be steps that the board would need to proceed with. So if you are heading in that direction and building the budget with that, I would recommend that we bring back that documentation at the next meeting. So 90 days before January 1? In the materials that were prepared, they provided a timeline of approximately 90 days through the DMV. So if for registrations that are due in beginning January 2025, we'd need it 90 days before. When we would um, set the effective date with them within the ordinance. Oh. So we get partial. Some people would slip by, depending on when their tag was. 90 days is the DMV guidance that it was provided. But to your point, it's not too late to take action. So thank you for raising that. And so then we, we could use that money possibly. In a account. We, and so we could possibly use that for traffic calming or like I believe, you know, we the street street painting really needs to be redone and we have nothing in the budget for that. Um, could we do that? As long as the expenditures are for transportation type equipment and costs. Yes, that could be a policy decision that the board makes in the future. Were I mean, you asking if the markings could be funded with these funds right, for the and, 2025 program year? Right. And I don't know the answer to that. If there's a policy decision by the board to fund it, yes. Sounds like we should, it sounds a little technical. So I agree to follow up to see what yeah. that would look like and we can bring it back at the 14. Does that sound okay, Trustee Stoprian? Sure. All right. Um, yeah, I don't love the, I, I mean, um, you know, there was a lot of feedback from um, the survey regarding, you know, uh, taking some, you know, what would be called, you know, regressive actions or, um, you know, like regressive fees in order to address the budget and a desire to, you know, not uh, some negative sentiment around that, which I definitely share. However, given our situation, I don't, I don't really see many alternatives to, um, you know, to how we make, you know, navigate the situation we're in without some steps that we would rather not take, including these two. So, um, that's uh, and so I it, with that I am supportive of them. Um, with regard to the street lights, uh, I think Rebecca's made the point a number of times. You don't see uh, municipalities typically redo their entire uh, street light infrastructure, and there's a reason for that. It's incredibly expensive. Um, this is, however, this is an identified need, and we need to address it. So. Um, you know, it's an extraordinary situation. So I think we have to take an extraordinary measure to address it versus, um, you know, in order to maintain, uh, you know, future financial flexibility. And as for the, um, um, you know, the, the uh, wheel fee, I, again, not thrilled about it, but it is, I mean, it, it does address actual costs that we do have to um, address as a community. So I can support both of these. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't have much more to add, um, you know, outside of, I think it goes without saying that we all realize that um, 
you know, we're taxing ourselves, <laughs> um, the members of the board, and even me as a renter, I know my rent will go up um, as a result of these um, additional costs for the property owner. Um, and so, you know, it's not lost um, on us that this is, you know, going to impact people. Um, in, and at the same time, if we don't provide these services, there is not another alternative to provide those services. We can't privatize um, the same way that they can do in Ozaki County. Um, and we certainly can't do it in time for the 2025 budget. Um, so what that would look like moving forward, whether it would be less expensive, you know, all of those kinds of questions we can't answer at this time. Um, and so I just want to make that on behalf of the board because I know that, you know, we all are um, uh, very mindful of that. Um, so with that, it does sound, and so I agree that these, I never supported um, flat fees. They're, I agree they're regress regressive, but in this case, um, this we can't say, we can't not look at these anymore. Um, and so I do think that they're the two that make the most sense or, and are the most reasonable. Um, so with that, that, addresses all that um, was proposed within the version two of the budget that was before us. Um, and so I'm wondering if there is any need to, um, I guess what I'm assuming is, and want to check out with the board, is does that mean that um, there's no need to discuss further a refuse and recycling charge for the 2025 budget or the use of parking utility resources and that we would hold those two items for further consideration at a future time. Um, I would agree with that. Could we get rid of our deficit then? Oh, oh good question. There is still a remaining deficit in the general fund. Oh, of, 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 of how much? Once we Four. update everything, it'll be somewhere around 100 and 150,000, right? Mm -hmm. So. We could tap into the parking utility for whatever is remaining after we make all of the updates and things shake out for the fourteenth meeting. Mm -hmm. um, that is still on the table. And then is that course. something that we need to um, that we need to give direction on this evening? And I'm sorry if I missed that key point <laughs> in the. Uh, it wasn't that questions. connected. Those are the two other options that we have at our disposal to make the budget whole for the general fund. Mm -hmm. So the two, it was parking. the parking utility and then looking at refuse recycling. Mm -hmm. And the parking utility is 450. So we would just take a chunk of that. And Some of it out as a transfer, it. put it in and put it into the general fund. I, as I mean, I, I'd personally just be in favor of that and um, not, mm -hmm. not the refuse and recycling fee. Okay. So, yeah, that's that's what I was getting at a, a minute ago as well. Is that I think uh, I don't I don't like the recycling refuse charge, um, but the parking utility fund balance. I mean, I don't see any reason that we couldn't use a certain amount of that. Um, I wouldn't want to use a ton of it, um, but I think you know, looking at like a quarter of it or something, roughly, I think is a reasonable amount. I agree. Mm -hmm. Agree. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will uh, defer to the board and support that. So does that give everyone, uh, the staff the and the team, all the information that you need to take the next steps and bring us back? Yes, thank you very much okay. for everyone's input. Well, thank you. Well, thank thank, thank you. you. You've thank done you. a fantastic job here. Really yeah. appreciate it. Um, but we're not done yet because there were some items that came up during our discussion earlier. Um, and so, without um, consensus of the board, um, I don't know whether to direct staff or not to, to look at these. So it's the funding a um, CAFR and a CAFR report, which is finance related, um, creating, I guess the credit card fees, that would be an alternative policy. So we would look at that um, in 2026, um, a desire to fund street markings, a desired, oh, it's Shorewood today, that would be a policy decision, so service level. Um, the EAB program, Trustee Stoke Brand, is that something that you wanted to look at us to what? not fund? The what? The uh, Emerald Ashbor program. Yeah, I would favor um, 
I think we could slow it down, but we've taken care of the deficit. But I do think it's important that we fund some sort of a public accounting document that we've been doing previously. There were a lot of complaints about people not being aware, and I think it'd be good. You could click on the website, and instead of looking at the many-page document, you could look at a CAFR or a PAPFR and get a, you know, when you're going through a budget situation like this, uh, it's really advisable to put more tools out there so people can click on something and find something that's easily digestible. Mm -hmm. We've done it before. So, we did it for many years. Yeah. So, um, feeling of the board. I mean, what would it be? Twenty thousand dollars, or? I mean, I wouldn't be okay with spending the twenty twenty grand on that. Mm -hmm. I think that's too much. And I think, I, I mean, th this information that we already have has, has worked well for me. So I, I'm happy looking at it the way that it is. And I'd, I'd rather not spend that much on mm -hmm. a report. In the absence of more information, I think it's hard to assess. Um, but other feeling with the board, I agree with Trustee Lynn. I, I mean, I, I I do see the value in that. At the same time, uh, you know, in in terms of a publication like that, um, at the same time, tacking on an additional twenty thousand dollars at this point is not something I'm exactly rushing to do either. If we could do, we could it do for, one of them for ten. If we could do it for less, I'd be open to that but would want to have more information. So a, a step would be, would you want more information? Oh, so Arndorfer, would you like? I would like more information. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, at this point, I'm not, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not interested in more information at this point. Okay. Um, so we do not have consensus to get more information on that, um, this year, but it does look like something we want to, so I would, I actually think it's related to service level because it would talk about your, you know, scope of work for next year. So we can bring that back. All right. And the other items that came up this evening would also come back under, um, service level discussion. Oh, lifeguards. Let's... Oh, right. That's what. I didn't read my writing. Um, so is lifeguards, um, how would the group, do you want to look at something in terms of information about funding or not funding next year? We would ask for information at the 14th. I mean, the beach isn't going to be closed, right? Just. Uh, it's never occurred to me. I don't know that we. If there's construction on Lake Drive, they're not, you're not closing in, the beach. In one minute, since we're already over time. <laughs> Project is structured in such a way that the northbound lanes are going to be built first. Um, and the last I saw, there was a um, a work completion deadline for that phase one northbound lanes of the 4th of July. So all um, traffic lanes and curb lane will be Parking. complete prior to the 4th of July, or at least that is the contract intention. Okay. That's just traffic and no parking, right? Because during construction, at the end of the day, we will have parking on that side. But during the construction process, I wonder if we won't, if it'll just be a, a lane of traffic. I think that's likely. Um, the road will not be open to through traffic. It will only be open to local traffic. Mm -hmm. So, Trustee Ersing? I'd just say that our lifeguard situation is extremely sensitive. It took a lot of work to get to where we are right now. And I think if any disruption in that, we potentially lose our lifeguards. And if you look across Milwaukee County and other communities, they're having a very, very challenging time trying to find lifeguards. So I think anything we do to impact those lifeguards right now is going to result in a potential loss of lifeguards in the future. And that's not something that I'm, I'm interested in doing at, at the beach. I would tend to agree. I mean, I also think people are going to find their way to the beach one way or another, regardless of the state state of the road. I, I agree completely. And then also, if it's more difficult to get to the beach for emergency personnel, I mean, that's all the more reason to have a lifeguard down there. Uh, just to me, that's something I would not want to lose out on. You mean they'll help okay. you cross the street? So they'll it'll... help save a life. Uh, that's you, they... that's what you're going to do, Kathy. It sounds <laughs> that's your role like during the construction. Great. Um, friends of the nature preserve. Now I, um, uh, it sounds like we don't have consensus to, um, take it out of the budget. That said, um, I'm really glad that the 
issue came up because I think in early um, 2026 also, we can start thinking about those things and it may end up looking differently. Um, but for we just don't have the information right now, nor do we have the appetite on the board to, to consider not funding those. But we may not have to fund it, but we'll have to look at that. All right, with that, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. Um, motion by Trustee McGovern, seconded by Trustee Ersing. All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, we are now adjourned at 8.07. We will take a slight, um, a quick break, and then come back and convene the, the um, meeting of the Village Board business meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, all right. Yeah, he's got him. Uh, appreciate you. I cannot yeah, remember. Like not, not right, thank you. you. Yeah. Is he nice from like out of town or something? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, it's the greens or the kid. What's that? Oh, oh, the kid here. Oh, oh the kid here. GDR and after what I Oh, no, thank you. But, uh, what did you do? Where'd you bring them? Not that I don't like donuts, but I thought I'd spread them. Mm. Probably some people that need really them. Oh, man. I meant did <laughs> I don't know if we've done that often, but I like that. Right. Your fair food. 
food. Yeah. 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 I'm like yeah. gobbling down there. They gave me life. Oh my goodness. This donut that I can't get out of my mind. It was a mango chili donut from a vegan restaurant. I'm taking the place. This vegan restaurant is not in the person like anything else. I don't I don't quite quite it is a cake donut, but don't remind me of that because then I, <laughs> this way I can at least say this. Yeah, the weather was Kathy. It's a donut. Oh my so god, what? and then, um, kind of weird. Oh, but, uh, of course, man, they're from a special yeah. 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 program. They make I it think it's a <laughs> no, oh, it's yeah. not. I do love it. I do love the show. They, they do such a good job. All right, you've yeah. never yeah. seen it. Yeah. You've never seen it. Oh, he's already no. I'm not, we're not thinking. Show, yeah. that part is. Well, yeah. neither are we, but the reason we see so much is because it's on PBS. I don't have it. But we don't have cable or anything. We just have an antenna. And it's PBS. Is, okay. We love it. Okay. Oh, I like it. In, in the past, it was on. Either, I think, right before. Do they do that? Or like, one, you know, in that range. It was on the East Side. Yeah. It was, well, it depended on, I suppose I should say, it depends on which PBS it is. Oh, sure. There's a difference in. And then he did the home or whatever, and oh, I don't know exactly. Okay. It was in that. It was in that like prime time. Yeah, yeah. yeah but we're all the yeah, no, uh, they're really fast. And Haley and I used to watch it. Ball, ball. Uh, did you? Did you do it? I did it. Yeah. I was too. You also did the album. No, it was like probably. All right, just that's all right. I don't know why I was just doing that much. Just can't resist. But when they play, they have a lot of episodes and past things. Yeah. Yeah. Right on YouTube. So you can look up just as a movie. If say like you're going to a town and just kind of or whatever, you know, right. so, yeah. right. like, you can look up and see where they've been. Yeah. Wisconsin movies, across, you know, whatever city and see if they've been there. Never done it. Um, it's really cool. Yeah, it was windy. Especially like the second trip, like when you're heading back, it's like almost near the end. That part's like up to the back. That's yeah. a thought. Oh, that I'm thinking it's, of. It feels longer when you're. Yeah. Every <laughs> far. Oh, there's my friend. Gave me I don't know when I mean, gave me. All right, we're ready to get started. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I can hear you.
No, oh, my computer went to sleep. I got to figure out how to make the change the settings so it doesn't do that. All right, are we recording? Okay, and everyone's here. All right, I'd like to call the uh, meeting of the village board to order at 8.12 p.m. We have all trustees um, a, a present this evening, except for Trustee Kudo, who has been excused. Has this meeting been publicly noticed? The meeting has been properly noticed and posted according to law. Thank you very much. Um, and I welcome everyone uh, this evening and um, thank you for your time, talent, and patience in advance as we conduct business. We have two proclamations this evening that I would like to take out of order. Um, normally they're done at the end of the meeting, um, but I would like to read them at the beginning. Um, and the first one I've asked our newest trustee to um, uh, to read um, in honor of White Cane Day, uh, Trustee McGovern. Okay, whereas on October 6, 1964, the United States Congress designated October 15th of each year as White Cane Safety Day, and whereas blindness and severe visual impairment affect approximately 109,000 Wisconsin residents, and whereas the majority of these persons use travel aids, such as a white cane or a service animal to get around public streets and sidewalks in places of public accommodation, and whereas these travel aids are universally recognized as symbols representing vision loss, and whereas Wisconsin's white cane law requires that motorists come to a full stop before approaching closer than 10 feet to a pedestrian who is using a white cane or service animal, and whereas greater awareness of the white cane law leads to safer, more attentive driving in general, enhancing the safety of all pedestrians, including children, elders, and people with disabilities, and whereas communities have the opportunity to implement many proven features to enhance the safety of all pedestrians, including sidewalks, accessible pedestrian signals, and curb ramps. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, President Ann McCaig, on behalf of the residents of the village of Shorewood, Milwaukee County, Wisconsin, do hereby proclaim Tuesday, October 15th, 2024, as White Cane Safety Day in the village of Shorewood, and also acknowledge the importance of pedestrian safety year round. Signed and sealed the 7th day of October, 2024, at the Village Hall of Shorewood, Ann McCaig, Village President. All right. Thank you for being here and being who you are and making the village a great place. All right. And our second proclamation this evening is um, related to October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Whereas October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, let it be known that the village of Shorewood is pleased to recognize and observe October 13th, 2024 as Metastatic Breast Cancer Awareness Day and hereby recognizes the hashtag LightUpMBC national campaign to benefit Metaviver. And whereas there is global hashtag LightUpMBC M BC campaign on October 13th every year to illuminate over 117 landmarks throughout the world in the metastatic breast cancer colors of teal, green, and pink to honor 117 lives lost to MBC each day and bring awareness to the disease of metastatic breast cancer. The day will cul culminate in a virtual broadcast known as Light Up MBC Live to commemorate landmarks lighting around the country, share inspiring stories from the metastatic breast cancer community and raise research funds. And whereas the pink ribbon is well known for representing the fight against early stage breast cancer, it is not included inclusive of stage four breast cancer. Therefore, the metastatic breast cancer awareness tricolor ribbon includes teal, green, and pink. The teal color portrays healing and spirituality, Green represents the triumph over spring, over winter, life over death, renewal, hope, and immortality. And the thin pink overlay signifies that the cancer originally originated in the breast. And whereas breast cancer is the most common type of cancer among women in the world, and the second leading cause of cancer death among women in the United States, more than one in eight women and one in 833 men in the United States will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetimes. In 2024, an estimated 313,510 Americans will be diagnosed and invasive 
with invasive breast cancer. And whereas metastatic breast cancer occurs when breast cancer spreads to other parts of the body, including bones, lungs, liver, and brain, and it has an average life expectancy of two to three years. Regardless of early detection, approximately 30% of stage zero to three breast cancers will return as stage four. An estimated 42,780 Americans will die from breast cancer in 2024, equal to 117 women and men per day, with 98% due to metastatic breast cancer. And whereas the National Organization of Metaviver Research and Support funds critical stage four metastatic breast cancer research and educates the public about metastatic breast cancer and lack of funding for stage four treatment. Metaviver aims to dramatically increase the current percentage of U.S. breast cancer research dollars from under 5% to 30% for the already metastasized patient. The national hashtags for this initiative on social media fall under hashtag Metaviver and hashtag light up MBC. And whereas metastatic breast cancer affects all races and socioeconomic classes, while Caucasian women see slightly higher incidence rates of breast cancer, the mortality rate for black women with breast cancer is 41% higher than that of Caucasian women. And breast cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related death for Hispanic women. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village of Shorewood hereby encourages citizens to join the national effort towards awareness of metastatic breast cancer during October and illuminate their local landmarks in the colors of green, teal, green, and pink on October 13th, signed and sealed on October 7th, 2024. Thank you. And I wanna thank these residents for bringing forward these important issues so that we can raise awareness from our um, seats as elected officials. Thank you. Moving on to item four, special order of business. There are none this evening. Item five, consent agenda items. Is there a motion to approve the consent, uh, consent agenda? So moved. Sorry, second. A uh, motion by Trustee McGovern, seconded by Trustee Lynn. Any discussion? Yes, Trustee Stokebrand. I'd like to please pull item uh, 10C is in cat and 10D is in dog. 5C and 5D. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda with the exception of 5C and D, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to item six, items removed from the consent agenda, 5C, consider regular village board meeting minutes, September 16th, 2024, Trustee Stokebrand. Yeah, I just wanted to add um, on 10B, my trustee report, I wanted to add the word recognized Trustee Stokerman recognized Barbara Kylie Miller, please. And with that, I'll move to approve those minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Motion by Trustee Stokeband, seconded by Trustee Ersink. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 5D, consider Village Center's HVAC capital request. Trustee Stokeband. I was just wondering what the additional 20,000 was for. If it's in there and I missed it, I apologize. Uh, it's because the price increased from 249 to 268. At then I'm ready to make. Oh, here it is. I'm just going to add, um, I move to approve the J.M. Brennan quote for HVAC at Village Center in the amount of $268,502 and include $20,000 for this critical item in the 2025 capital budget. Second. All right. Any dis uh, motion by Trustee Stokebrand, seconded by Trustee Arndorfer. Any discussion? I, do, I thought we you said it earlier, we, we funded this in 24. Right, but it... Um, With the $20,000 additional, we have to do it? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, 
I just want to say thank you for really tackling the rebate issue and the technicalities around that. And it is unfortunate that um, we couldn't get <laughs> that, you know, it ended up the way it is, but thank you for doing the right thing. Um, all those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to item seven, public hearing. There are none this evening. Item eight, citizens to be heard. This item is for matters not on the agenda this evening. Are there any citizens to be heard? Um, we have no one left in person, but we have um, several people on the Zoom. Um, I see Barbara Kylie Miller with her hand up. Um, good evening. Um, I had my hand raised during the Committee of the Whole, but I'll ask my question now. Um, the 2000 um, or the 2017 tax bill is due to expire um, after the first of the year. And unless the Republican candidate for president is elected, um, it's probably not going to be extended, which means that the $10,000 cap on deducting local um, and state and property taxes um, will be lifted. So I'm wondering um, going forward, um, is there a chance after 2025 to incorporate those various fees that you're considering back into the general levy? Because I think most property owners, including myself, would um, rather pay for those items in our property tax bill and deduct them rather than have to pay a separate fee, which we cannot deduct. So I'm just wondering if that's something that you can uh, discuss um, at some point in the future and consider doing if that tax bill is not renewed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Miller, um, for bringing it to our attention. I guess I would direct staff to get information about it and then we can um, take it up at the logical time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, are there any other citizens who would like to be heard at this time? All right, seeing no one, um, we will move to uh, item nine, new business. 9A, consider ordinance 3067, amending chapter 299, food, lodging, and recreational safety and licensing of the village of Shorewood Municipal Code to reflect amendments in state statutes and fee schedule amendments. This comes to us from the our health officer for the North Shore um, Health Department. And there was a, um, to recap, there was a change of state statute. Um, and so the language of the local um, ordinances uh, need our best to be updated, to be in, um, in alignment with those. Often what we call a housekeeping motion. Is there a motion to approve? Or any questions? Attorney Bader? I was just going to, um, just for clarification's sake, there's actually two things here. One is approval of an ordinance that will amend um, part of our village code to reflect those changes. And then the second one would just be a motion to approve the um, um, the requested fee changes. So there'd actually be two, two different actions. So thank you. Yeah, if somebody could take those one at a time. Appreciate it. So the motion or the um, the ordinance itself is on page 142 of the materials. So we just need an ordinance to approve ordinance number 3067, amending chapter 299 of the code. Uh, so I move approval of ordinance to amend chapter 299, food, lodging, and recreation safety and licensing of the Village of Shore Municipal Code to reflect amendments to state statutes. Second. All right, motion by Trustee Ersink, seconded by Trustee Arndorfer. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, this will be a roll. Oh, I, I did miss the ordinance number in my motion. Okay. All right. Thank you for checking. This will be a roll call vote. Trustee McGovern? Aye. President McKay? Aye. Trustee Lynn? Aye. Trustee Arndorfer? Aye. Trustee Stokebrand? Aye. Trustee Ersink? Aye. Motion carries 6-0. All right, and a motion to 
amend the fee schedule. I move to approve the fee adjustment for public pool licenses. I believe so. Brad, is there any more than that? Or should we just generally? I move to approve the, I'm sorry, North Shore Environmental Health Consortium proposed fee schedule for 2024-25. Thank you. Second. All right, motion by Trustee Stokebrand, seconded by Trustee Ersing. Any discussion? Hearing none, um, is this also a roll call? Yes. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That concludes new business for us this evening. Moving on to report of village officials. Village president, we already took care of the two proclamations for this evening. The only other report that I have is that I'm um, honored to be invited to attend the Biden event tomorrow um, as a guest of County Executive Crowley, and I will ask him for money. <laughs> for water mains. <laughs> really anything. <It> really anything. <laughs> um, village trustees. I got one, yeah. Um, I went to the um, annual fundraiser for Jewish Social Services, their their housing program, um, to take a tour of um, their newest building that's under construction. They're up to about 250 units now in five separate buildings in Brown Deer, and they're really nice. They're uh, all new looking, um, really, like, really like an asset to the community. The main one kind of has like a big uh, like green area, like green space and places for residents to do cookouts. The, the first one was for low income seniors. They've added um, additional facilities. Um, they added assisted living. They have family housing. Um, and it was all funded by weeded tax credits, private donations and rental income. Um, and they're just really nice, really, really an asset to the community. And I've got to briefly chat with the director of WIDA and he's interested in what we're doing here. And to email them if, if uh, we ever have questions or need help from them. It's a fun, fun event. I uh, had the invitation passed on by Rebecca, um, by their their director lives in Shorewood. Their their fundraising director lives in Shorewood. So that's how we got the invitation to that. Thanks. I'm glad you were able to go. May I ask how many, is it like high rise, mid rise? They're, they're all like three or four stories, kind of mid rise and all kind of spread out. It, it's it's kind of in like a complex, you know, there's like different buildings. And then we took a bus over to the new site, which is maybe like half mile away. So they're, they're all kind of, kind of in the, all the same area of Brown Deer, sort of near the bike path. The, the Oak Leaf Trail, Oak Leaf Trail that goes up there. Thank bike you. path in Green Bay. Um, like come out of Brown Deer Park. The one through Brown Deer Park. I actually rode my e-bike up there, so. Didn't even know it went up there. <laughs> it's close to the little village. Uh, it was close to it's. It still seemed like it's the like strip malls and stuff nearby. Um, but uh, nice, nice facilities. Okay, other reports. Just want to say there's uh three more farmers markets till the end of the season. So uh, right now things are bountiful, and uh, if you need veggies, right now is the time to come get them because there's a lot going on at the farmers market with veggies. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, Beautiful the broccolini days. at Amy's Acre looked so good. Okay, I thought you were gonna say there's three more donuts left. There's just <laughs> there's two more donuts two left. Donuts. There's right. two more donuts left, just in case. I got a sugar headache. Okay, <laughs> Trustee Lynn. I I think this happened. This is a couple weeks ago, but the hundred anniversary of Lake Bluff. Um, mm -hmm. the, the ceremony was great. Um, they did a really good job, uh, that day. I just want to thank everybody who helped plan that and the staff at Lake Bluff and everything like that. I mean, it was just amazing to see that hundred year history. And, and one thing that I can't stop thinking about is it's amazing to think that just 101 years ago, there was no school. I mean, it just, it really highlights how important it is for us to, as a community, just continue to value these things because it it's possible for it not to be there. Um, and it was just, it was just really, they did a really great job and just, you know, we're so lucky to have that school in this community. So. I heard from a number of people who just um, kind of wandered into it and with kids, my people, <laughs> my kids ages, and they were just really, really moved. So it was not only, you know, well, um, it was welcoming to the broader community as well. So 
thank you for representing. Yeah, and I know you read the proclamation, so thank you for yes, uh, representing the board. Thank you. Happy to. All right, village manager. We have a communication about OWI speed and seatbelt grant participation. Right. So pursuant to um, the request from the board, when grants are applied for and going to be um, reviewed, they're going to be listed under my report. So included within your packet is that detailed review provided by the chief. These are, are grants of which we participate on in an annual basis. So um, this comes back to you for your review and information. All right, thank you. Um, if there are any questions, you can follow up uh, with Manager Ewell. There are no future items of consideration this evening, and so I would take a motion to move into closed session. So moved. Oh, no, it's not a. You got to read it. Yeah, dang it. <laughs> Sorry, what page we got? Up. Oh, it's not linked here. Um, I move that the village board adjourn into closed session pursuant to 19.851E to discuss negotiating strategy for the police union agreement. Second. Okay. Motion by Trustee Lynn, seconded by Trustee Stokebrand. This will be a roll call vote. Trustee Stokebrand? Aye. President McCaig? Aye. Trustee Arndorfer? Aye. Trustee McGovern? Aye. Trustee Lynn? Aye. Trustee Ersink? Aye. Motion carries 6-0. All right, we are now into closed session at 8.34 p.m. And um, for the last two people who are on the call, I'm going to be um, stopping the recording right now. Um, the only item we have following this item will be adjournment. Um, there'll be no further action um, taken this evening, so we're going to be shutting down the recording. And thank you so much for joining us. 34.